Hey, shortwave listeners. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to part two of scanning the bands, the 35 meter band, or as I subtitled this, Digital Secrets and the UFO, the mysterious UFO. So hope you stay tuned for that. If you happen to catch my first scanning the bands video, you'll happen to notice that I'm not going in frequency order. So I'm not going to basically do the 160 meter band and then the 150 meter band. I'm actually jumping to bands that I think are the most interesting first. Ones that are a little bit more mysterious, don't have a lot of coverage, and might be more interesting just to start. We'll get to the other bands sometime, but we're going to start with some unusual ones to kick this off. So let's start with what the 35 meter band is. I am choosing the frequency range from 8,000 kilohertz to 9,200 kilohertz, or 8 megahertz to 9.2 megahertz. And you'll find that continuous tuning shortwaves will have these frequencies available. And you're going to need single sideband in order to listen across this frequency range. Whereas some radios don't even include this frequency range. These include radios like the, the XH Data D328, or the Texan R9700DX, or even the older Kaito KA1103. This is because there are no international public shortwave broadcasters on those frequencies. If you look at this FCC table of frequency allocations for both international and domestic US, you can see how, the, how they've partitioned this particular 35 meter band. So FIX, Maritime Mobile, Aeronautical Mobile, FIX really meaning just allocated frequencies by the FCC for private or public or government stations that are at fixed locations. I'm sure there's more definitions for fixed, and if you know what they are, please add them to the comments. All right, let's just dive in and take a look at the spectrum. This is a web SDR located in Sweden, which is scanning here about 8,000 kilohertz to 9,000 kilohertz, or 8 megahertz to 9 megahertz. And it's about 7 to 7.30 local Sweden time, which is a really good time to be listening to this particular set of frequencies on the 35 meter band. And you can see clearly that this spectrum is full of signals. And these are not typically voice signals. These are almost all digital audio signals. I've deliberately left the sound off because I didn't want to scan across that. We'll, we'll take a look at each of these in detail. But by just watching this, you can see how crowded this band is. And many of these signals are probably encoded military communications between NATO countries, possibly secret stations, possibly pirate stations, um, even number stations. So we'll talk about each of those in detail. But next I'm going to have to give you a primer on the specific types of signals that we see on this band and what each of these types mean. Here are some common standard signals you'll find on the 35 meter band. Now, I'm no expert on all of these, and you're going to have to look them up yourself to get more details, but I will provide certain examples of some of these. But let me just give you some high-level definitions of each of these, just so you understand generally what they are. STANOG stands for Standard Agreement. I talked about this in my 170-meter Scanning the Bands video. Uh, basically provides encrypted and um, unencrypted communications between NATO countries. Next up is NAVTEX, which stands for Navigational Telex. It's just an international automated frequency direct printing services for delivery of navigational and meteorological warnings. NAVTEX is typically transmitted using SITOR or simplex teletype over radio. It just allows text messages to be transmitted over radio. Volmet, which is a network of radio stations that broadcast weather information to aircraft in flight. So this is voice information. And Volma comes from two French words, which mean flight and weather. Then there's Mawara, which is major world air route area. Um, basically a set of frequencies that are provided for voice communications to airlines, typically over the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, that will compensate for lack of VHF coverage and use HF frequencies for longer distances. Then Link 11, which is a secure half duplex Technical data link allows exchange of digital information for the military, basically used by the U.S. and NATO armed forces. Then HFDL, which stands for High Frequency Data Link, which is a method of aircraft communications um, with ground stations using HF frequencies. 
just a way to send and receive data to aircraft for different types of controller or aeronautical operation controls. And then fax modem, which just uses a similar frequency shift keying, much like the other signal types, which typically be things like ocean currents and weather charts. And as I mentioned in the title of this particular slide, this is only some of the standard signals. Obviously there are more and I can't cover them all. You're gonna to have to do some investigation on your own, but there are some things you can do. Let's take a look at that spectrum again. So looking at this web SDR in Sweden, if I hover over each of those identifiers at the top of the frequency chart, what you should see is a pop-up that shows specifically the location of that signal. Now you can't see it, my web capture didn't capture that, however, but it'll give me some more information about each of these. And it shows you some of those signal types that I mentioned earlier. For example, you can hover over one of the Stanag ones uh, to see where it's located. Additionally, you can look at Amwara or you could look at a fax. Again, just hover over each of those and you'll see the location. And then you'll be able to click on those and actually hear the specific signal. All right, enough of the overview. Let's start listening to some of these signal examples. First up, Stanag, everyone's favorite. The airplane sounding fan noise that, that you find across multiple frequencies. As you can see and hear there, probably some discerning listeners here understand there are some differences between Sanag types defined based on the bit rate and the frequency shifting that's occurring. So they sound a little bit different. They're easy to identify just by listening. Next up is a nav text example. As you can see, that's providing maritime information. Now we'll take a look at Volmet Voice. Thunder, oceanic air and control area. Frequent thunderstorms observed within six zero nautical miles wide. Line between four eight zero zero north zero three four two zero west four six two zero north zero three four zero zero west. And here's a quick Volmet catch from my location in the central U.S. Perfect has copied at 6 0 Bye-bye. Next is HFDL. You'll be able to see the actual decoding of the message using the SDR in Sweden's HFDL decoder. Take a listen. And here's an example of a modem fax. You'll be able to see the actual decoder uh, drawing an image, it looks like, of the Russian coastline. Take a look. Well, what else can we hear on this band? There's plenty of mysterious signals across this range of frequencies. I've only added a few here, CW beacons, number stations, pirates or freebanders, signal jammers, radar, over the, over the horizon radar. There are many others. Um, it'd be great if people had comments about some of these mystery signals and what these might be. But I'll give you some examples. Let's start with CW beacons. About 10 years ago, I had an old single sideband 
shortwave receiver. And I was just scanning in this area of frequencies. And right at 8,000 kilohertz, I started to hear a CW signal. And this signal were the letters UFO repeated over and over and over again. And I was really intrigued. I didn't know what it meant. I, of course, scanned the internet to see if anybody knew about this. And I did find some messages about people hearing the UFO beacon on other frequencies, along with someone hearing it on 8,000 kilohertz. And for all I know, this was a one-time thing. I've never heard it again, but it was very mysterious to me. And it really intrigued me. I think it was the first thing that really intrigued me about this band. And what I'll show you are there, there are many other beacons on this band. So let's take a look. First up is just an unknown CW signal. I don't think it's a beacon necessarily, but it's right around 8,000 kilohertz. Take a listen. Now I can't quite tell if that's a beacon or just a CW number station or just some general CW uh, for say military purposes. But maybe someone here will know what that is. Next up are the beacon letter markers that are apparently originate from Russia. I think someone has tracked that down. They're just repeated letters similar to my UFO repeated sequence, but this is just a single letter like the letter P or the letter L or the letter S. Again, no one knows why these exist. Apparently, maybe for military purposes. But take a listen. There's a number of examples here from that SDR. Really interesting and really mysterious. Next, we have our first number station. Most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with number stations. This particular one is part of the US military. It's called the High Frequency Global Communication System, and they basically transmit on multiple frequencies a number of messages, some of them in clear, clear voice messages, others that are just um, numbers and letters, alphanumerics, that are encoded transmissions, sometimes known as EAM or emergency action messages. I think there's a lot of information here online. You might want to go take a look at it, but take a listen. Here, here's an example of an actual message being transmitted that I picked up at my home location. I don't have any examples right now of pirates and or signal jammers on the 35 meter band. So you'll just have to investigate online and try to find when these might appear and at what frequencies. Last up, uh, this is an unknown signal 
comes out of Japan. It's called the slot machine. No one knows what it's for or why, why it's there. Perhaps some advanced listeners do know, and if you do, please add some comments below. But take a listen. Well, I think that's enough to give you a broad overview of what the 35 meter band is all about. And hopefully you'll spend some time experimenting and listening and discovering some new things about that band. So take care. Uh, I hope you subscribe and keep listening to Shortwave. Thanks.